John Blades for a start. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I always like to think of my attitude towards the MS from day one being to put the MS on the back burner and get on with my life. Although I've got no movement below the neck, there's a lot of life to be lived from the neck up. Multiple sclerosis is a disease of the central nervous system where the nerves that control the muscles in the body are damaged. With the progress of the MS, the most difficult thing is the loss of independence. Independence that I won't gain back, but I've clawed back a large part of it through the use of the computer, through university and my working life as an engineer. I had absolutely no interest in computers. I had no aversion to computers. I was a technophobe. I just thought a computer was something I could completely do without. I made a definite decision. I'm never getting a computer. But around the end of 2002, they say the worm turns. And I even was thinking, gee, everybody's getting computers. Everybody's on emailing. I'm gonna really miss the boat. But I didn't know how to go about it. And then in April of 2002, I was staying the Multiple Sclerosis Society respite and accommodation center in Lincoln and a diversional therapist there. I actually had a little word with her. I said, I'd be quite interested in having a look at what this computer business is all about. And so I said, would you just show me A, what voice activation's all about and B, what the internet's all about? Well, I was sold immediately. And I couldn't believe that I could travel the world with my voice sitting in front of the computer. So I saw immediately almost the universe opening up. I thought, this is for me. I've got to get involved in this. Good morning, you're tuned to background noise on 2MBS FM 102.5 megahertz. Good morning, Richard Fielding and myself, John Blades, back in the land of the living. The occupational therapist at the Multiple Sclerosis Centre, at my request, put me in contact with a company in Sydney called Ability Technology, who I'd heard were very experienced in setting people with all sorts of disabilities up with computer systems that would help them access the computer. So I thought these are the people that I really need to see. I've been called a worry ward. I built up this thing in my mind that it would be such a huge thing to actually buy the computer, set it up in the house. Anyway, all of that was taken away because Ability Technology did all this for me. They came and assessed my computer needs, saw that I would need voice activated, and then went away and bought all of what I would need the computer, most important, the table to mount it all on that I could get under in my wheelchair and the printer and microphone speakers. 
so that I could use the voice activated software and then they set all this up in the house stole all the software then gave me the all important training as well because without that I would have been at a real loss you've got to be able to move the cursor which is a little arrow around on the screen and I've I was introduced to a very clever, let's say, reflector system. Seems very high tech. But as soon as the magic dot was put on my forehead, I could reflect the infrared beam onto the screen and just change my world. I thought, this is unbelievable. That setting up of the computer, my introduction to voice activated and the inset, sold me on it and transformed me from being way behind the eight ball to at least being in line with the eight ball. What I do on the computer now, I think is probably best summed up but what I don't do on the computer. And I think what I don't do on the computer is minuscule. The first thing that got me into computers was emailing, and I'm now in contact electronically through emailing with people all over the world. Gemma. Improving Dragon Scratch that Dragon Recognition I hope everything Is going Okay Second thing is You can Create on the computer documents that allow you to do anything. And for me, that's preparing scripts for my radio show. Every Wednesday, I prepare on the computer a things to do list. Things to do Wednesday, March 31. 2010 one dot photos on computer I started doing feature radio programs on ABC Radio National Hi Brent Clough here welcome to 360 documentaries the subject of disability and sexuality has been widely ignored by the media and society at large. Broadcaster John Blades has a significant disability and he'll be your guide on a journey through the uncharted waters of sexuality and the disabled. Fragments from John's own life story are sprinkled... Through One of the really important things was being able to use the telephone to make contact and to answer phone calls and reply to phone calls. And so I had something put on my computer called Voice Over IP, which is basically a computer telephone where my computer is the telephone. But it means that I can make all my phone calls through this phone Hello, this is Gemma speaking. Gemma, it's John. Hi, John. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Gemma, I sent you an email that I'd like to organise a uh, voice recognition improvement session as soon as we can. Got to work out a couple of mutually acceptable dates. No problem, John. How 
How would this Friday be? But as well, of course, as visiting numerous websites related to music and the arts all over the world, listening to radio on the internet, watching ABC News, reading the Sydney Morning Herald, which I haven't been able to do for about 10 years or more. I listen to CDs on the computer. I watch DVDs on the computer. I prepare all the material for my radio programs by listening carefully to the CDs I'm going to be playing, choosing tracks, noting down the track numbers, which I incorporate into my scripts. It was just so simple. I know people who are watching this are going to think, oh yes, but he was an engineer. He would have picked it all up very easily. It's not the case because I had to get out of the mindset of not wanting a computer. But really, the internet, the access with word processing documents, with emailing, it's all so straightforward. It was just like it all fell into place very easily and I'd be completely saying the wrong thing if I said there are never any problems. Because there are always little things, but I regard them as challenges to overcome. Computer usage for me has been a very easy thing to assimilate into my life. It greatly improves your independence. Greatly improves your self-worth, your self-image. All those things are invaluable. And it's really, I think, something that's absolutely essential. And I would really say to anybody who's in a position where they think, oh, no, I couldn't really take this on. So not only think again, to just go out and do it. There should be computer funding for people with disabilities to access and use computer technology. Should be part of what the community should be conscious of and should be supporting, which is to improve the lives, expand the lives, expand the universes of people whose lives are already undergoing difficulties. Not just communication for those who can afford it and not just communication for the able-bodied but an integrated community that embraces and brings into it people with disabilities and people with non-disabilities. So I exist in this world where I've really escaped the shackles of my disability and I exist almost anonymously where I've elevated myself above the disability. It can be the same for everyone with the disability in that when you're communicating with people and they're not people who know you particularly well, there's no need to mention the disability. It's not relevant. And so to be able to exist as a non-disabled person inside a disabled shell it's so much freedom.